After about five years of not using Instagram, I finally used it and now I understand why the world is going nuts about mental health and social media. If you've got Instagram, then you need to hear this right now. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Amin and I wrote the book on Islamic masculinity and I run a business from here online in Istanbul. Now look, I take an interest in my brothers, Muslim men and how they're living and what problems they're facing. So after five years of deleting Instagram, I finally created one for business purposes only and I was shocked at how bad it is for us. In fact, I believe it has serious implications for our mental health and for our fate on the day of judgment. Now, later on, I'm gonna go into what I think is the worst part of TikTok and Instagram. But for now, let's just talk about the first issue, which is this deadly combination of a visual platform, it's all videos and images, plus women being on that platform who have turned being attractive and tempting into a science. Plus any natural healthy man, these three things together is a disaster. And actually about this, I was telling a coaching client the other day that some people just say, yeah, yeah, the algorithm is what it is. You get whatever you're interested in. But let's be honest, we're men. We're young men, we've got that urge. And if we see women, we're probably gonna be fed women more and more. Because out of 100 images, right at the beginning with a fresh account, you're probably gonna be shown 50-50 women. Out of those 50 women you're shown out of 100 posts, are you not gonna look at just a few of them? I mean, after all, they've turned being attractive into a science. This is a formula right now. So if you're a normal, healthy man and you go and see some women, unless you have, mashallah, amazing way of lowering your gaze, you're going to look at a few of them, which means Instagram, TikTok, they will feed you more of those. And I was even shocked by this because even though I was looking at more Islam related content on Instagram, I was being shown a lot of Islamic content by Muslims, by women who are full of makeup and who again have turned being attractive into a science. And this is the thing that floored me. I go on a reel or something and what came up was a Muslima, she was reading a hadith or she was writing a hadith on the screen or whatever. And she's just full of makeup and she's just looking at the screen like that. Like, look at me, basically. Look at me, I'm vain, uh, look how great I look. And there's a hadith right there. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> what has the world come to? <laughs> this is insane, this is next level. It's not just next level that people are doing that, it's next level that this has become acceptable to the point where people feel they can even share that. It should be that, yeah, there are always gonna be some people out there that do these crazy things, but they should be shut down for it straight away. But no, if you look at the comments, it's mostly encouragement. So when it comes to Instagram, TikTok and women, for us Muslim men, the truth is that we're just gonna look at what Allah designed us to be attracted to. And just like if you go to a beach with half naked women everywhere, you're going to sin and you should not go there. The same applies to Instagram. You're 99% going to see stuff you shouldn't be looking at. So do not go there. And that's just on the lowering the gaze and the sin side of things. But what about the amazement? What about the simping that you get from looking at these curated women? When I say curated, I mean the algorithm has curated them for your feed, but they've curated themselves for the male attraction algorithm as well. And trust me, this will play with your focus. This will play with your mind. This will play with how you interact with women and how you see and deal with women. It will make you feel like they're high up, they're on a pedestal because of how amazed you will be with their beauty. I know one guy, he went to Instagram to distract himself when he felt like uh, he had an issue with porn and he went to kind of distract himself from porn on Instagram and he got triggered on Instagram by this kind of stuff and he went back to porn. It triggered him and it made him go there. These are two sides of the same coin. Instagram and porn, I'm afraid to say. Okay, so that's women simping over women, sins of looking at women and all of that. Another huge problem is it turns out this whole jealousy and comparing yourself with others is a real thing. I wasn't sure about it before, but when I jumped onto it, I was very conscious of what is happening in my mind when I'm going through it. And let's put the women aside when I'm just looking at neutral or men's content. That did kick in a little bit. And so all these years where I wasn't on Instagram, I was seeing articles and videos here there about how it messes with your mental health. It makes you feel bad about yourself. It makes you feel ungrateful. It makes you feel like you've got nowhere in life because you're being shown the best of the best. The best of what people have accomplished in life is on Instagram and you're comparing your everyday life with their highlights. And now I didn't think this would affect me, to be honest with you, but voila, it does. And I can't avoid that and I can't help that. And I think it's just the way it is. As mentally strong as I might be compared to people in a younger generation to me, 
it just it's not enough still i mean think about it it's got to a point where it's not just businesses it's not just creators influencers that have this brand image in mind when they're posting no the average person is trying to only post their best stuff they're only trying to post things that are in line with their brand meaning in line with the way they want you to perceive them and you know your friends everyday friends you see them in all kinds of situations in university or at work or playing football or in the gym you see them in these different situations and you see how they react and you see the authentic them but what people are doing on instagram is they're trying to curate and narrow down to show you the only five percent of their life that actually would impress you and in the end make you feel bad about your life so everyday people even though they might not have any money coming out of it they're trying to create a brand image for their instagram like wow these people are professionals and what diving back into instagram made me realize is that us humans subhanallah we're very status driven once i saw this i couldn't unsee it every single post i saw on instagram was trying to raise that person's status in one way or another so one guy is showing off his abs even though it might not be obvious they try to show it but he's showing it one girl is trying to show off her beauty like the weirdo just staring at the camera with her makeup on and to an extent that's normal we expect that but I'll tell you what's even crazier because there are different ways that people show their status and amongst different groups of people status is shown in a different way so what about somebody who's now posing with the Kaaba behind them is that trying to raise their status well illa man rahim Allah it is it's showing that to that audience of people who look up to someone who's doing Umrah or who can go to Umrah and they're actually in Umrah and they're smiling with their husband, wife, kids, whatever, that is raising their status. So for these people, except for those that Allah has mercy on and they're very sincere and they have other intentions, they're trying to raise their status, but it's just to a more religious crowd. So this status seeking pattern on Instagram becomes the norm. And all of the things that you're fed and the things that do very well through the algorithm are being shown to you. And therefore, you're not only shown things that make you feel bad and those are the highlights of their life and my life is boring and rubbish, but you're being shown things that show you that you're lower status than all these other people. And it's just a constant reminder of your low status. Of course, in reality, your status is not low because you're comparing your everyday life with their highlights. But this is subconsciously feeding you, feeding you, feeding you until you start to believe it. Personally, I didn't think too tough about this when I was on Instagram. But bit by bit, I realized I can really see how this would eventually mess with my mind. But me, just personally, I hate waste. So the worst thing that I found actually about Instagram is it just wasted my precious time. I don't need to go into well, asrin al insana lafi khustar and all of this. You know how precious time is. And now more than ever, we're busier than ever. We feel at least busier than ever. And yet people are spending two, three hours a day on Reels or TikTok. Me personally, I really feel the value of time. I feel like I want to be busy. I want to be doing a lot of things, but I want it all to be intentional. I want to be getting a good return on the time I've invested. So if I'm going to waste my time, do something where I'm more relaxed, I want it to be the best form of relaxation not something which ultimately after an hour of scrolling you don't feel much fulfillment relaxation from it in fact you probably feel worse because you've just seen people who've accomplished loads of stuff and that's going to make you feel worse and like wow i'm not at their level and i just wasted an hour of my time when i could have been getting closer to where they are i hate the time wasting element of it and if i want to be relaxing if i don't want to be in work mode i want it to be intentional and i want to choose to be doing it but what happens most of the time on instagram on tiktok is we open it without thinking and we scroll and we get engaged with things without thinking and i don't want that i want to be engaged in relaxation whether it's watching youtube because i want to and i decided to whether it's going horse riding going to the forest going to the park grabbing some coffee with some friends i want it to be intentional and Instagram puts you in autopilot and that's no good. The Prophet ﷺ said that actions are judged by their intention. We should have an intention of everything we're doing, not be on autopilot. This rant has been a rant, but hopefully it's opened your eyes to actually how serious this is for anybody who's ambitious whatsoever. Whether you want to get to Firdaus al-Ala, whether you want to achieve something else that's like in the dunya that will lead to something in the akhirah. If you have any ambition, I hope you understand now of how this needs to leave your life. But I don't just want to rant. I want to give you some solutions and some steps forward. How do you fight back? Because this really is a fight. Shaitan is at war with us from the day we're born. Shaitan is at war with us. And no doubt one of his weapons, one of his cruise missiles, ICBMs is 
something like Instagram and TikTok. No doubt about that. No doubt we're also at war with the engineers who work at Instagram who are trying to modify the system and tweak it and improve it from their point of view to keep us there longer and longer and longer. And they don't have no criteria for how halal it is or how it affects our heart or anything like that. They just want to keep us there as long as possible. We are fighting to grab back our time and they're fighting to take our time from us. And so we're at war, whether we like it, whether we went in to engage with this war or not, we're at war. How do we fight back? Here are a few options. Number one, just delete it. This is actually the easiest thing. And once it's done, it's done. You don't have to resist opening it, it's deleted, right? Delete your account, delete it from your phone, it's done. Very simple, very easy. You might start thinking, have resistance. Oh my God, but what about keeping in touch with that guy that I went to school with 300 years ago? You get this resistance maybe because you have some sort of addiction to it. No judgment, <laughs> no judgment, but that might be the case. But number two is to have the account, even maybe have the app on your phone because it's a bit restricted on desktop, even though that would be better, but limited. Use an app like freedom.to. I'll put a link for you. And you can choose that it is blocked, for example, for 22 hours of the day or 23 hours of the day. So you have a one hour window, a two hour window where you can open it. And I don't recommend you open it and scroll it. I just have it unblocked for business purposes because I use it for business. And that's why I have an account in the first place. And so I needed to use it. And so I just have it unblocked for a couple hours a day. I can go in and reply to some things except being tagged in certain things and blah, blah, blah and I'm done, I'm out, right? And for the other time of the day where I'm trying to get stuff done and achieve something in life, I cannot even open it, even if I wanted to. Freedom.to or any kind of blocking software like that will help you a lot, as long as you're not super, super addicted. Because if you're super addicted, let's be real, you'll get around these blockers. But if you have a little motivation, a little bit of discipline, then this will definitely help you. And then the third option is to delete it off your phone, but still have an account and just use it on your desktop. You can also use the blocking software on your desktop to limit like how long you use it or when you can use it. But when it's on a desktop, I feel like it's a lot more intentional. When you're waiting in the line for a coffee or you're waiting for the bus or waiting for your Uber, you're not gonna grab your laptop and open it and get and go onto Instagram there. So you become a bit more intentional with using it when it's only on your computer. And this is how I prefer to use it. I only use the phone when there are certain features that are only available on the phone. And even then it's for a two hour window. So yeah, this kind of maybe is the softer way of dealing with it, which is a delete from your phone, but use it on your computer and even on your computer, limit the hours. And so it's purely a computer related thing, which is less addictive. You become more intentional with it. The sins, the girls, the comparison, the mental health issues, the time wastage. This is a killer for any man who wants to achieve something serious in his life. And it comes a point where you've got to look around you and you've got to say, look, most guys, most Muslim men, even my peers, they're not doing much with their life. And if you're watching this video, you probably have quite a lot of privileges and advantages in life that Allah will ask you about. So do you want to go Yawm Al-Qiyamah and say to Allah, look, I did this. You gave me all this time or this freedom or this bit of extra money and I actually spent it well. And you, you can actually defend yourself in that court, in that judgment. Or do you want to just be like, yeah, you know, those engineers at TikTok, they got me bad, what can I say? Those girls, they were too attractive. I just kept going. So what do you want to do with your life? And what excuse are you preparing for Yom Al-Qiyamah if you keep going with this? Think about that deeply. Do you want to go with the crowd? Everyone's using it. Everyone's got it. There's like billions of people who have an account on Instagram. But us Muslim men, one of our characteristics, and it's in us, we just need to nurture it and bring it out, is that we don't follow the crowd. We have principles. We stick by the principles. And if following those principles means that we're going to step out of line, that we're going to be the dark horse, then we do it because everything is worth it for our principles. And those are the solutions, but listen, there's still a problem. Even if you delete Instagram today, you may be still stuck in the shackles of women and your attitude towards them. So watch this video next to find out that problem and how to solve it today. To the fire. Love is so